Now, again, as we creep into the merge, you're seeing some people buying. But I also think there's a lot of people that are just sitting on the sidelines because it is a risk, right? If things don't go well, you could see a dump in Ethereum's price. I'm in the belief that they've prolonged this kind of merge and kind of double check, triple check, quadruple check, where I think it's going to go smoothly. And I think you might see it. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin with Aaron back at it again with Gareth Soloway. We just did an awesome video on Bitcoin price predictions. The link for that is down below. Today, I want to just cover Ethereum, your views into the merge and beyond. But Gareth, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. And yeah, Ethereum is such an interesting situation going into the merge. We've seen a big rally off the two, the the June lows in Ethereum, even though we've pulled back a little bit percentage wise, it's blowing Bitcoin out of the water in terms of gains off the lows. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the merge goes. And I think the biggest thing for me into the merge is can it go smoothly? And for the whole Bitcoin crypto sector, I think this is a big test. A lot of people are sitting on the sidelines and saying, OK, this is the biggest thing we've had in, in crypto in a while. Can they pull it off without a hitch? If they do, I actually think that's a confidence builder for the crypto community. The world is watching right now as Ethereum goes to this upgrade. Yeah, I, I want to start by taking a look at the, at the Ethereum chart. And, sh and before we get into what you project for the future, just take us through these last few months and share what happened. And did you expect this or was it more bullish or bearish than what you expected? Yeah, so so the Ethereum chart it basically did what you would expect it to do in a bear market, which is means that percentage wise it fell more than Bitcoin, but generally it goes up in bull markets percentage wise more than Bitcoin as well. So it kind of kept that thing going, which which is what we saw. Now we did see again a low put in right around this, you know, just sub nine hundred level, and it rallied all the way back to two thousand. And you can see right here why it stopped right there on a dime. You have this sideways chop and this little pivot high, put a trend line in there, price literally just tagged it. And then we saw a pullback. Now, again, as we creep into the merge, you're seeing some people buying. But I also think there's a lot of people that are just sitting on the sidelines because it is a risk, right? If things don't go well, you could see a dump in Ethereum's price. I'm in the belief that they've prolonged this kind of merge and kind of double check, triple check, quadruple check, where I think it's going to go smoothly. And I think you might see a relief pop once it's kind of completed. So again, I think overall, you can see support is right here. This is around the 1450 level. Uh, resistance is around 2000. If the merge goes smoothly, I think it could pop maybe as high as the double top here back to 2000. This is the 200 moving average. That would be your resistance line. I ultimately think if Bitcoin's going down and I think risk assets will see more selling, Ethereum probably will have another leg down to it and at least retest the lows around that 880, 900 level, maybe go lower. So I think, again, shorter term merge, if it goes smoothly, short term bullish. Um, once you get outside of that, then I would be very careful. I wouldn't be someone who would be buying on the completion of the merge, because I think then again, you might have a sell the news environment and a little bit of a pullback off of that. So the bullish case going into the merge, which is less than a week away. Mm -hmm. when this video comes out, is about a 2,000 price point, the bullish case. Yeah, that would be my bullish case in the near term. Now, now just to point out my longer term view, and I know you guys know I'm very bullish longer term on Bitcoin. On Ethereum, I actually am, with the merge, I'm even, I'm bullish, very, very bullish on the longer term. I think this is exactly what the, the crypto market wants, is that this deflationary asset where it also has this massive use case that's being adopted more and more. And it kind of has like this double-edged sword now. It has like kind of a side of side of Bitcoin with a side of almost being a, a stock, if you will, that has this real use case and, and kind of network connected to it. And I think it, it actually has a chance longer term to rival Bitcoin's market cap. And it may take a long time for that, but I do think it has that potential power. So it sounds like you are, I mean, are you more bullish on Bitcoin than Ethereum? It sounds like you're also pretty bullish on Ethereum. Yes, yes, I am. I would say I'm I'm equally as bullish. I think Ethereum right now offers a little bit higher risk than Bitcoin. Like if someone said to me, you got to pick one and it's going to be a wild ride, what are you doing? I'm probably going with Bitcoin for safety purposes. But in terms of potential Xs, how many times it can go up, I think if you're you're playing with money you can afford to lose, you go with Bitcoin uh, with with Ethereum. 
Do you have any perspective on the BTC ETH chart? Because we looked at it on our channel the other day and ETH value against Bitcoin is, is peaking to what it was close to September of 2021 at Bitcoin's all-time highs. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's really interesting, right? I mean, it, it really is amazing to look at that. And I can bring up the chart here. It just doesn't have a ton of data on it. But but basically, you can see you've come all the way back in here on the Bitcoin ETH chart, where you're actually testing this level of support here, or very, very close. So I could see it coming back into that level. On a technical basis, you would actually think that this chart would start to bounce, which I believe would indicate that Bitcoin might start to bounce a little bit more than ETH, which interestingly enough, could mean that you might get after an initial relief of the merge going smoothly, you might get some selling in Ethereum versus Bitcoin. So, so it is interesting to note, but I do think again, that if you look out further, meaning years out, I do think that Ethereum does continue to grow at a faster clip than, than Bitcoin in terms of market cap. Now, about four, three, four, five months ago, I put a buy order on Coinbase if Ethereum, Coinbase Pro, if Ethereum hits uh, three hundred and thirty-three dollars, that's going to be filled. Well, is that a pipe dream? Could that ever happen? <laughs> Number one in crypto, nothing's a pipe dream, right? Uh, so I think it's smart to do those type of things. In fact, even layering, you know, like putting one at like you know that eight eighty level, then at six eighty, then at four eighty, and just doing like small positions because. I do think that depending on the regulation that comes down, what the rules are, initially it could spook. And if you have a light volume period in Ethereum, it could really see a big quick dip on algo selling and stuff like that. And I also think that just you just never know in terms of the overall asset markets, if something big happened, if, if, if China invaded Taiwan, for instance, a risk assets immediately would freak out. And I think longer term, you're right. I mean, Ethereum is this juggernaut. So getting it in there would be just absolutely awesome. So I think that's a great play. Nothing wrong with that. Can't hurt. Yeah. Aaron? Out of um, all of the other uh, ETH competitors, you know, the alternative DAP platform is Cardano, Solana, Polkadot, that stuff, Avalanche. Is there one that you like more than the others? Oh, that's a good question. And again, I'm mostly a chart-based trader. So I'm trying to think in terms of the chart. Um, I have to say, I mean, and this is very short term, uh, meaning over the next couple of weeks, but I've liked the relative strength that we've seen in Solana just in the last couple of days um, versus some of the others. So, so for instance, when Bitcoin broke down, we saw Solana hold its major support and then start to inch up. And currently it's trading around 33. So I would say at least for the next couple of weeks, I think a the uh, Solana looks very, very interesting with potential upside, maybe back to about $40 from this 33 handle. Relating to the Ethereum merge very loosely, but just crypto in general, what's something you wish more people understood? Oh, boy. Well, considering I'm a chart guy, I really implore people to just learn the basics of charts, learn what a double top is, what a double bottom. I really believe there were so many people caught on the wrong side when Bitcoin hit that high. Same thing with, with Ethereum. But the charts, if you had looked at the charts, understood the charts, there was a clear double top in it. And you could almost see the the insanity of, of Bitcoin, anytime you see incredible insanity in any asset, and I'm talking greed, insanity, or fear, that usually marks a pivot point. So you never want to be someone that's a chaser, right? You always want to be a leader. And so you buy when price is down and you sell when it's up. You never want to buy when price is already sky high, assuming it will go higher. Now, does that mean you sometimes miss some trades that go higher? Sure, it does. But again, pre preservation of capital is how real wealth is built. Final question, and this one's way just for fun. On December 31st, what will ETH's price be? Obviously, just for fun. Oh, my gosh. Throwing, throwing a hard one out there. Um, <laughs> December 31st, I'm going to say I'm going to say it's going to be a thousand bucks. And what is it now? Fourth, fifteen hundred. 1633 I have. Okay, guys, let's all come back. We're oh, all going to stay subscribed. Now, you say just for fun, but now I know next interview when we're, we're going to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah. Hey, well, I, you know, we, we didn't give, we didn't, Aaron, you got to give yours now. What's, what do you think <laughs> it'll be? Um, I'll go 2000, 2100. Nice. Whoa. It's bull, bull in a bear market. Love it. Yeah. I love it. Hey, hey Gareth, one more question. Mm -hmm. Um, what are your thoughts for Ethereum over the next five years? Let's say Bitcoin gets into another bull market. 
how what what are your thoughts for price prediction? Yeah, I think I think in five years you could be easily looking at a twenty thousand handle on Ethereum. I, I think again the next couple of years are going to be the tricky years for all of crypto, especially Ethereum, and trying to trying to get people to kind of um, invest and get these rules under their belt. But once that happens, I really think once these regulations get into the system and people know them, you're going to start to see big money going after Bitcoin and Ethereum, and that's going to be the game changer for price. Price is going to go up fast at that point. Gareth Soloway, thank you so much for joining us on the channel. If you haven't already, check out the Bitcoin interview we did uh, same day, uh, but your links are down below. Final thoughts for the audience. Uh, just again, um, just be careful, like I said before in the last interview. And I think I think if you do one thing, do try to learn one little chart technique or one basic chart technique, maybe once a week. It doesn't take more than 10 minutes of time, but it will change your financial future. It will improve your ability to spot tops and bottoms and just put you in a better position to, to be in good bull markets and out of bad bear markets.